Hey everyone, uh, it's been a while. Uh, just a little bit of updates, I guess, on the side before I start uh, with the main topic of the video. I've got a haircut, as you can see. Um, I've been busy uh, with work and uh, a lot of different things going on at work. Uh, so I just haven't had the time. And yeah, so <clears throat> I just haven't had time. And then, you know, I do my own things. I do a little bit of my own uh, 3D modeling stuff and research that I am just generally interested in uh, as well. So let me get my sketchbook real quick from here. <clears throat> just want to make sure I cover all the topics that I want to talk about in this video. So I want to start a new series on my channel that I have been interested in actually doing because I haven't, I, I use it at work a lot. Okay. I don't, all right, Dre from steam. You can go away now. Um, <clears throat> I've been using it at work quite a bit. So I've been learning a lot about, you know, I use a lot of the knowledge that I learned from school, uh, but now I'm really applying them in different ways than I never thought I would. So I want to share that with you guys, and I think that will be an interesting way to give back to the computational design community or grasshopper community as well, specifically, I guess, how I use these tools. So mainly what we'll be going over is um, these two sections, whether it's member index, uh, specifically creating sets, or also using characters or mostly it'll be all about this kind of column text. So how can we utilize these in computational design and how can we use this to gather data, use data, interpret data, um, all that. So formatting to uh, character to especially concatenate. That's the main one. So we can either use concatenate or we can also use a uh, can also use C sharp as well in order to concatenate as well. <clears throat> I'll be showing you both ways to do it using C sharp and um, using concatenate as well. Uh, the C sharp one uh, will just be a little bit faster, but it'll also it, it it's it just takes up less space instead of um, if you zoom in on concatenate, you see you have like multiple, so you can just like add a bunch. So yeah, so and then just mesh text. A lot of these texts kind of, if you know Excel, um, then a lot of these look familiar in regard to matching and replacing. Uh, this is basically like find text, and this is basically replace, find and replace in uh, Excel. Uh, and this is same, similar, but a bit different from, um, or a bit different in my opinion. <clears throat> and then, yeah, just all these different ones. Uh, I have never seen this one. I didn't even know this existed. Uh, this must be new to Rhino 7 because I, or I don't know, I've just never seen it. So, yeah, I think I'll be going over mostly text files uh, in particular and how to export them and import them into Rhino as well. So what I'm thinking, or export... Um, Right, uh, from Grasshopper to Excel and Excel into Rhino or Excel into Grasshopper, excuse me. I know there's plugins and things like that for reading Excel. Um, one thing I will be going over at least is where is it in? I don't know if it's in here specifically. Um, can't remember. Let's read 3DM. Oh, wrong one. So read 3DM file. It's either this one or 3DM. I think it's import 3DM. <clears throat> it's one of these two. So what I what I like to do is, um, or it may not even be these two. Usually I s usually make a quick C sharp script to get the file name for the actual file that we're using. So in this case, in Rhino, it's just Rhino 7 common or Rhino 7 commercial. But usually what I would do is. Uh, there's a method on getting the name of the file and using that as a way of exporting it uh, as well. So you have um, ways of name having a very consistent naming convention when you export as well. This really comes in handy. I wouldn't say in school. Uh, it could. I mean, everything is applicable in school, but it's more in handy with at least in professional work. So <clears throat> a few things I want to go over is this section will be based purely on doing text editing and text manipulation within Grasshopper and using ex, um, external programs like Excel um, as well to import into Grasshopper and try to interpret it and manipulate that data as well to then re-export back into Excel. 
uh, for other people to use. We'll also be going over replace text, uh, basic panel uses, uh, as I said before, exporting text, and then the final one that I think, uh, or text matching, and then the final one that I think is going to be the most challenging to teach you guys uh, because it's so specific and vague at the same time is uh, G-code manipulation. So I've been doing a lot of G-code manipulation through ShapeDiver uh, for my company as well, um, if, which is basically uh, with through additive and subtractive manufacturing. So I am wanting to show that it's very vague, but also clear at the same and very specific at the same time. It just depends on what your company uses or what kind of machinery they use and what kind of, I guess, in, in specifics with subtractive manufacturing, it's about your post file and what it looks like. Um, same thing with uh, additive manufacturing is a little bit easier, at least um, Marlin based um, kind of like home DIY printer uh, like um, additive manufacturing. They're all similar, but I mean, uh, that's the ones I work with since both of my, all three of my 3D printers use Marlin, uh, Marlin 2.0 or 2.0. One, I think that's one. I think it's just 2.0. Uh, so all my printers use that, so I'm just used to all the um, the language of that as well. <clears throat> so yeah, I think that's the things I'm going to be going over very briefly. Um, not briefly. Uh, I'll be going over in depth in other videos uh, through exporting, um, especially G code manipulation. That's something that I'm very interested in uh, trying to explain because uh, I know how to do it. It's just like hard to put those into a way that people can understand what I'm saying and uh, talking about. And I think that's the challenge that I'm looking for as well is to uh, show that knowledge and really give that to people that um, want to experiment with Grasshopper in a very custom way. Because I think Grasshopper is used a lot in geometry, but there's a lot of potential in just like editing and text-based things and um, being able to transfer uh, almost translate your 3D geometry into something that someone can use to produce the object itself. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, you can see people on Steam are popping up, so I'm, I'm going to play some games <laughs> uh, first before I start planning out these videos for you guys. And I hope you guys are, exci are as excited as I am. I really want to do these things, and I find them quite interesting. I'm looking down here because I want to make sure I get all my notes. Um, but yeah, I, I, um, that was pretty much it. So uh, I hope to see you guys on the other videos. And yeah, I will see you guys then. Thank you guys for watching. And I will see you guys on the next uh, part of the series. Thanks.